So these pistons are brand new, so are the rods. They're Keith Black 944s, uh, 40 over. When I had the block machined, they bored it and honed it to match these pistons perfectly. These are brand new SCAT 6125 rods. They're a uh, Jeep 4.0 rod. And then ARP bolts. Pretty good setup. What we're going to do is make sure that the rings fit the pistons and that they fit the bore with the right gap. So these are Hastings Molly rings. And you open up the box. You've got the first set of rings, first groove, second groove, and then the oil rings. When you look at the difference, the first groove has the shiny Molly coating on the outside. And the second groove has that flat black on the outside. They've also got a dot that goes up. It's hard to see in the video, but there's a bevel, and the bevel faces down. You always put the dots facing up, according to their website. So we come back over to the block, and we're going to measure piston ring end gap. It looks like we're looking between 10 and 20 thousandths of an inch. That gap is the gap at the end of the ring. So what we're going to do is stick it into the bore. Then we need to get it nice and flat. So I'm just going to push it on down in there using a piston. I'm going to go right down to the edge of the skirt on both sides. Nice and flat. And let's start off with 15 thousandths. Just going to slide it into that groove. Looks like it goes right in there. Let's bump it up a couple to 18 thousandths. Hmm. Yeah. Stuff's in there, it's getting a little tight at the end. We'll call it 18 thousandths. So that's kind of towards the high end, towards 20 thousandths, but it's within the range, so we're good to go. Do that for the rest of the bores, and we're all set. Now let's measure the piston ring side clearance. That's this clearance right in here, side to side. So looking at the book, we're looking between 1.7 and 3.2 thousandths of an inch. So Peel that sucker out. There's two thousandths of an inch. There's 2.5 thousandths of an inch. Let's try that. Set that sucker in place. See if I can slip it in there. Yeah, it's nice and snug. Pulls through, but it's definitely nice and snug. So we're good to go. Well within the range. Now let's do the same thing for the oil rings. They're a three-piece set, so we're going to install them and then measure them on the piston. These are the flex vents or spacers, and then two rails, one above, one below. When you stick these on, make sure not to overlap them. So they go in the bottom groove, just kind of plop them on, they're pretty simple. And then these start below, just get the tip in there, and work it all the way around. You're going to want to alternate the spacing on these things, but it's easy to do once they're on there. Put the second tip in, slide it around, and they're going to want these things to be at least an inch apart, the tips. You can just grab them with your thumbs and slide them around. And that's good. All right, so it's calling for anywhere between one thousandths and eight thousandths of an inch. So let's start off with, uh, let's go with four, right in the middle. Slip that sucker in there. That's, that's snug, maybe a five. Five doesn't really want to go in there, so we're good to go, well within the range. All right, now let's move on to the compression rings. We grab one from the second groove. Look for that dot. Here it is right here. That faces up. It's a ring expander. Slip them right over the top. 
down to that second groove. All right, now let's grab one from the first slot. One of these ones with a shiny Moe edge on it. There's no dot, there's no bevel. Can go up or down, doesn't matter either way. Slip them in the ring expanders. Slide them over the top into that first groove. And good to go. Let's spread this gap out. It's just alternated at 180. And that's that. Put it in the box, grab another pistol. Also want to point out that that upper rail gap is about right here. And then the gap on that number two ring is all the way around, clear away from it, spaced out nicely. Let's blow by. Got them all nice and clean. See those holes up there towards the top of the piston? That's where the oil comes through to the oil rings. So while I've got the engine upside down before I put the oil pan on, I'm going to fill up these pistons with oil and that'll let these rings saturate. So we're going to install two pistons at a time. Number one and number six, number two, number five, number three, number four are paired on compression and exhaust strokes. So what I'm going to do is straight in the crank bolt and then rotate the crank around to where its bearing surface is farthest away from this cylinder. That's closest and then farthest away. That way it's easier to operate the torque wrench and tighten it down. All right, let's get these pistons going. So normally on your rod, you'd have a couple of studs sticking out. You can use these cool little things or a piece of rubber hose or whatever to protect the cylinder wall when you're sliding them in from getting scratched. I'm using these cool ARP bolts. So I'm just gonna take a extra glove, slip it over the end to protect the walls. I'm going to turn the sucker upside down and set it in the vise. Just going to pour a little bit of oil in the rings. Some people do, some people don't. I want to see what the harm is, put a little extra oil in there. Just nice and snug, not super tight or anything, just enough to hold it, makes it easier. Whoa! Make sure you got plenty of oil in this thing, it'll turn a lot easier. Make sure you have a little bit of skirt showing on the bottom too. Okay, you got another nice and tight. Make sure to leave some skirt showing. It helps you line it up in the cylinder. We're going to throw a bearing on here. Take that bearing. Make sure to slip it into that tang. Let's use some of that slick stuff. Just get a good healthy dosing on there. Smear it all around. We'll slip that glove on and slide it on into the bore. All right, find that arrow. Make sure she's facing the front of the motor. Feed it on down into the cylinder. Get the skirt in there nice and neat. Make sure it's facing perfectly forward. What I like to use is the wooden end of a hammer or a mallet. Uh, some people use a, a rubber block. But just take that wooden handle and just tap it down in there. That's it. All right, now let's pull that glove off the end. Hold it with one hand so it's nice and even on the Crankshaft, tap it the rest of the way in. I've got number six and number one in. I'm going to flip them over and put the bearing caps on. All right, so got it all flipped over, got the bearing and the cap, tang lined up. And if you look at the side there, it's enabled. That says B105. The rods and caps have their own little markings on them so you don't mix them up wrong cap wrong rod anyway before we just flat it full of that permatex and 
crank it on down, we gotta check out the plastic gauge. They're calling for anywhere between one and three thousandths of an inch, preferably between 1.5 and two thousandths of an inch. So let's get the sucker on there and then crank it down to 33 foot pounds. And that's 33 foot pounds. And it looks like we're right at 15 thousandths of an inch. It's pretty even all the way across. Pretty even inside the cap too. And just in case you don't have your AAA card, your buddy isn't here, he's got one. Little PB blaster dissolves that stuff right away. Makes it pretty easy to wipe off. And got a good healthy dose of that Permatex Ultra Slick on here. When you set this down, make sure you go tang to tang and that the etching on the end of the rod and the end of the cap match, same numbers and the same side. Got the rod bolts covered in that ARP Ultra Torque, that fastener assembly lube, get that accurate torque reading. Crank it down to 33, move on to the next, number one, and then we'll flip it back over and do cylinders two and five. Okay, got one and six done. Now I'm gonna rotate the crank around by hand until it's farthest away from two and five, all the way down at the bottom. I did throw some oil on top of the pistons and smooth it around a little to coat the walls and make these pistons travel a little easier. All right, now it's time for the girdle. If you've got an older block, you don't have one of these. The newer blocks have a thinner cast, so they put a girdle in to make up for some of the flex between the journals. It's just a longer main bolt with a little stud on top. The problem is when you're running a 4-2 crank, in a 4-0 block, there's not enough clearance for that girdle and the rod will contact it right there. So what you need to do is space that up about 120 thousandths of an inch and that'll take care of your problem. I got these cool washers from ARP. They're a 200 8554 and a 200 a 10-pack and two two-packs. They're 120 thousandths thick 3 8 ID, 5 8 OD, chrome only washers, they're perfect. So it turns out 120,000 spacing is still not enough. Even with those in there, these rods have so much meat on them, they'll contact it. So I went down to Ace today, got these washers, they're 63 thousandths of an inch thick. I'm going to stick them underneath the main bolts in between the cap and the bolt. That'll raise the whole bolt up. And if you can see in the top, the stud isn't quite all the way through into the threads. So I also got these all metal lock nuts, which are a little bit lower. They don't have the flange on the bottom, but they should hold it just fine. That way I get the stud all the way up into the threads. Got it all back together. Got the 63,000 spacers here, the 120,000s here, and the all metal lock nuts on. You can see the threads sticking through the top. That's great. Tighten these down to 35 foot pounds. Let's rotate it and see how it looks. Oh, plenty of room. Yeah, we're good. Now I'm going to check and see how the oil pan fits as far as the clearance on the girdle goes without a pan gasket on there. It looks like up in the front area here, the girdle's contact in it so I'm going to take some of this material off take it back some well it's better now it's not hitting in the front more along the middle so I'm gonna throw a few bolts in the edge and massage it down